Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm filming a very, very special collab with my friend Leticia. I found her on Instagram, I believe. And she has a YouTube channel. She is mostly on Instagram, but she's trying to get back into YouTube. And as one of the ideas she had, she wanted to do a collab and I thought it was great. I want to support my friend. She is so supportive. She's so positive. If you are a mom, and you know you're always looking for really awesome like quick help tips or quick recipe ideas she's a great person to follow she's so positive she's got affirmations that she does every day on her instagram story so i really like following her and she's also a professional makeup artist so she knows all the tips and tricks and she also gets a lot of pr so it's really fun to watch her receive new products. So thank you, Leticia, for wanting to collab with me. I really appreciate it. And if you guys check out her channel, I will link it down below. Check out her video. She is also doing a similar video called Products She Changed Her Mind About. And without further blabbering, let's get into it. So the first thing I want to talk to you guys about are Z palettes. This wasn't originally on my list, but while I've been sitting here thinking, I definitely was not a fan of Z palettes at first. The very first one I bought was a black one, it was a mess, and I never really used it. But recently, as my single eyeshadow palettes have grown, I have kind of enjoyed Z palettes the most. This is just like the best solution. I've tried like the ColourPop palettes, I've tried that big one from Color Grain, kind of keeping them all in one, but this medium sized Z palette just works well for me. It, I have so many of these now, but it's so fun because it has that clear plastic top which really helps you kind of visually see which palette you're picking up. And I just love the size of these. The magnets work really well. So originally, I just wasn't a fan of Z palettes. I didn't understand the value they provided. And after trying a few other ones and a few different sizes, I realized how much I really like the, you know, packaging here. I don't know any other brands that do the clear. I feel like a lot of them are copying Z palette, but a lot of the ones I've seen on the market that are affordable have... A, they don't have a clear top and I think the best selling point of a Z palette is the fact that you can see in through it so that's just a quick one I wanted to throw out there but let me pull up my list because I made a list on my phone yes Teddy of course my dog is here and of course he wants attention do you want to come up here come on come on come on Oh my goodness, where's a fur monster? Hi, boo-boo. Is there anything you want to tell people? You want to say hi to Leticia? Hi. She loves watching him, right? She always sends me messages when you're acting a fool and she's like, oh my God, your dog loves you so much. And I'm like, yeah, glad somebody does around here. <laughs> just kidding. I just kidding. I just kidding. Okay. <laughs> okay, you want to get comfy, Teddy? Okay. It's just going to lay here like a lug. Okay, so the first thing I want to share with you guys it was something I changed my mind about was glitter glue. So for the longest time, I think I just didn't understand how to use glitter glue. I bought the NYX glitter glue. I bought the Too Faced glitter glue. I ended up decluttering the NYX one. And I haven't repurchased it since because I've been loving the Too Faced Glitter Glue. But at first I was so clueless about how to use it and I finally figured it out. So I always put some on and I usually do one eye at a time. I put some on my lid and then I stamp my, you know, shadow or glitter on. And that works perfectly. My favorite is the Too Faced one. I also have one by Lit, I think, but that's like really intense and it's better for like loose shimmers and stuff like that. But yeah. Glitter glue was something I changed my mind about, which sounds pretty basic, but you guys, I'm basic. Like, what can I say? The other product I've changed my mind about is Makeup Revolution highlighters. Um, I used to love these highlighters when I was in college. They were so affordable, so pigmented, but they are very, like, dusty and shimmery. So at the time when I was in college, they were great for my budget, but now I prefer a more baked gelée type formula where it almost looks like your skin is wet. So I really like, for example, the Dior Backstage highlighters. I love the Anastasia Ex Amorizi highlighter. Like those ones look like your skin is wet. 
and it doesn't just look like there's a bunch of sparkle just hanging out on your skin. So that's a product I changed my mind about. I used to love it, but I don't love it anymore and I won't be repurchasing it anytime soon. The other product I've changed my mind about is Natasha Denona, specifically her $129 eyeshadow palettes. Now I own the Lila and I used to own the Sunset. Was not a fan of the formulas, but I recently picked up the Gold palette. And you guys, I've made so many videos on why I love the Gold palette. I recently reviewed it. I will link it up in the cards for you guys if you're interested in watching that video. I love the Natasha Denona Gold palette so, so much. The color story, the pigmentation, the different textures, it all works for me, especially with my skin tone. So if you guys have been thinking about getting it, I would totally recommend it. But that's one that I used to not like, and I totally love that particular formula from Natasha Denona. So I just wanted to mention it here. The other thing I've changed my mind about is MAC foundations. I know a lot of people love MAC so so much because they're one of the first brands one of the first high-end brands that had a wide shade range but i swear to you guys i cannot find a shade that works with my skin tone and my biggest gripe with mac is like nc42 in one shade or one foundation shade range for mac is not the same as nc42 in a different shade range and some of their foundations they don't have nc42 so then you're like which shade and then like some of their shades are just too orange, like even though they're tan. So it's just like a hot mess. And so I've just given up on trying to find a foundation shade from them. It's just too much work. I like some of the foundations I purchased from them in the past, but since it's so inconsistent, I don't plan on repurchasing or purchasing anything in the future from them as far as complexion products go. The next thing, and this is the first thing that came to my mind on products I changed my mind about, which is the Lorac palettes. Their eyeshadow formula used to be my favorite. I at one point owned all of their pro palettes and I don't know what happened, but one day I woke up and I was like, you know what, I really don't like this formula anymore. Um, they were too powdery and the shades just were so, so basic that I feel like I've kind of moved on from those colors. So yeah, I just ended up decluttering them all and I've just never felt the urge to, you know, continue to purchase from them. So that is a product I changed my mind about that I used to love and I don't love anymore. The next thing is dry shampoos. Now this is just a product category in general. I feel like for the longest time, everyone thought dry shampoo was like the next best thing since sliced bread. And I love the concept, but I cannot find a dry shampoo I like to save my life. I've tried the expensive ones. I've tried the low end ones like from the drugstore. I've tried Batiste. I've tried the dry bar, I've tried philosophy, like I've tried, like you name it, I've tried the dry shampoo and I'm just like, I'm done with it. I don't think it does anything spectacular for my hair. I swear half the time it ends up being greasier um, after I've worn it and then I like instantly regret it. Like I'm just like, I'd rather wear my hair up in a bun than try to fix it with dry shampoo. So yeah, I... I tried, I don't even know if I can say I loved it and I don't anymore. I feel like I've just tried so many and it's just a product I can't make work <laughs> in my hair. So I'm done with dry shampoo, you guys. Um, the other thing recently that I changed my mind about is the Body Shop Toners. I used to love Body Shop Toners. I've ha bought so many of them, so many different varieties that they offer and I've bought pretty much every single one. Um, but recently, it's been leaving my skin feeling really dry every time I use it, especially the vitamin E one. This one right here, which is on my vanity, which I'm trying to use up, every time I use this, and this is supposed to be the hydrating toner, it leaves my skin feeling drier than it should. So I was very disappointed, and I really, really changed my mind about the Body Shop after I started using this guy, which I recently picked up during the Sephora VIB sale. This is Sun and Park, and I believe... Stephanie Nicole was recommending this, so I actually was so excited when they announced that we were getting another weekend because I picked up a backup and I'm going to put it in my bathroom upstairs because I don't think I can live without that beauty water anymore. It's my absolute favorite and it definitely made me change my mind about the Body Shop toners. I'm going to declutter all of those because I don't think they're working with my skin type anymore and that's okay. Okay, the next thing I changed my mind about is the Sunday Riley Flora Oil. So I actually have all of the Sunday Riley oils and the Flora one is supposed to be like the deep hydration one and it was so disappointing because over the summer, I don't know if it was just the AC running that 
messed it up but it started turning gelatinous so you guys know if you keep oil in the fridge like it'll harden you know and it'll turn into that white like lard looking thing and that's kind of what started happening with flora so i told my mom when she was here i was like can you leave it outside and see if it like warms up if the you know it'll go back to its oily consistency and it never did so that was kind of a waste and i was really bummed because i was enjoying the oil but the fact that that happened and it didn't happen with any of their other oils like all the other oils from them the luna the um juno and then the green one I can't remember what it's called, but I have all three of those as well and nothing like that's ever happened with those oils, but the flora turned into like a jelly goop and I can't even use the dropper to scoop it up, so I ended up putting it in my empties container jar bin thing that I collect my empties on, but I'm so bummed that that oil did that to me. <laughs> the next thing I changed my mind about are Jeffree Star highlighters. I actually had two highlighters from him. I had the Manny Collab and the King Tut and what I felt about those highlighters is I think I like them because they were so high shine, but I swear it's like, it almost feels like you're putting your finger into an eyeshadow, like a metallic eyeshadow. And so it was very thick, very gritty, not a huge fan of the formula. It definitely emphasized texture. So even though I really like the idea of them being super, super high shine, after a little while I felt like, again, I like those big gelée highlighters, so I wasn't really loving the look that it was giving me and then if I ever had like texture on my skin it really emphasized texture so for that reason I ended up decluttering both of those highlighters from my collection so the other thing I changed my mind about and this is pretty recent is the ABH Sultry palette so I really love ABH's formula I picked up the palette right away when it launched and I was so excited about it but once I got it I just really had a chance to look at the shades and I wasn't in love with the shades because I felt like the shimmers were more neutral and then the mattes were so cool tone and then there was that one shade was a bloom that was like the coral shade um it didn't just play well together for me and I'm not really a huge fan of cool tone eyeshadows so after using it a couple of times I really felt like it wasn't really gonna do a whole lot in my collection which led me to decluttering it that's one I changed my mind about and not for the best so another product, an eyeshadow palette um, collection that I changed my mind about are the Huda Obsession palettes. I bought the initial ones when they launched and I was not a fan. I felt like the quality was just not as good as the bigger shadow palettes. And then she launched the Jewel Obsessions. And you guys, those colors, like I couldn't say no. So I bought four out of the five that she launched. I ended up picking up Topaz here recently when the sale was happening and I think those palettes are so much better than the originals. I know some people don't see a difference in the formula but I feel like I have her bigger palettes and I kind of expect the same formula as are in her bigger palettes from the smaller ones which I still feel like there is definitely a difference. The bigger palettes are definitely a lot creamier and stuff like that but the new shades she came out with definitely made me change my mind about those obsession palettes and I see the value of having a smaller palette like that with a concentrated color or range um, so I really like those palettes. Okay the next thing I've changed my mind about is primer and this isn't like any primer in particular but I just feel like with the type of skin I have I don't really need like a pore minimizing primer or anything like that. I just have dry skin and I feel like my face oil, the Juno face oil, gives me enough hydration. I am now like forcing myself to use up the primers I have. Like I have the Becca Luminous one. I've bought a few and I just don't need to use them. So even though I love like primers and the fact that they can kind of help you with your skin, like if you have oily skin, you can use a primer to help your skin stay matte and stuff like that. I don't really have those issues at this time. So I have changed my mind and I don't really incorporate primer into my skincare routine. As long as my skin is hydrated, I feel like my makeup stays on and then I always just finish off with a setting spray. So that's something I've noticed about my makeup habits recently. So another product I've changed my mind about, and this is, I don't know if you guys are going to be surprised by this, but it's the ColourPop Super Shock Shadows. This was the first product ColourPop ever launched, and it's kind of what made them famous. And they have so many beautiful colors, and I had like a really big Super Shock shadow collection. And after a while, it just got so taxing to have to grab single shadows every time I wanted to use one. I'm definitely a palette person. 
single pot shadows are just not for me. So I um, I decluttered all of them. I just sold them on Poshmark for like five bucks or something. I just don't want them in my life anymore. I haven't purchased any new ones. Even though they have some very beautiful shades and there's some OG Super Shock shades that like, you know, I have memories associated with them. But I just couldn't, you know, justify holding on to them. They weren't being used and I figured, you know, better to just get rid of them than them just sitting in my collection collecting dust. So that is a product I changed my mind about. And then the NARS Orgasm Blush. Oh my gosh, NARS, NARS Orgasm was like my first high-end blush. And I'm pretty sure I panned it. I don't know if I panned it twice, but I definitely remember I panned it at least once. And I remember going to Sephora and talking to the sales associate and I was like, oh my gosh, I'm like looking for a blush and she recommended NARS Orgasm, which like if you show me NARS Orgasm now, I'm like, that is like my least appealing color. Like I'm so into like mauve tone blushes and berry tone blushes and NARS is like a pink, like the Orgasm blush is like a pink with like gold flecks in it and it's just like so far from what is my style right now. So I think it's so funny that that was like my go-to blush was NARS Orgasm. <laughs> and I definitely plan on never repurchasing that again. So that is one. And then the last product I've changed my mind about is the Urban Decay Naked series. So I am such a huge fan, or I was such a huge fan of the Urban Decay Naked palette, the original palette. Somebody gifted it to me. I would say that's what like sparked my spiral into my love for makeup, is the Urban Decay Naked palette. And then that made me go into Sephora more. And I didn't buy the second one because I didn't think it was, was for people with my skin tone. And then I bought three, I wasn't a fan. Returned it, didn't buy Smokey, wasn't a fan. Bought Naked Heat, didn't really love it. And then now they have Naked Cherry. They've also done like Naked on the Run and those mini naked palettes and things like that. None of that has appealed to me. And now when the naked palette was being discontinued, I was like, should I repurchase it? Like, just so I can have it. And I was like, Karen, you're never gonna use those shades. Like ever, ever, ever. So yeah, it's just so funny because that's kind of where I started. And now it's like, I could never go back. <laughs> so yeah, that is the final item in products I've changed my mind about. Okay guys, that is it for products I changed my mind about. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you Leticia so much for asking me to collab with you. Definitely you guys go ahead and check out her channel. Like I said, especially her Instagram. I love her Instagram so much because it's like my daily dose of positivity and motivation and don't forget you guys, you're kind, you're amazing, you're beautiful, you're worthy. That's what she says <laughs> every day on her Instagram. And I, I love that so much. And she is just such a sweetheart. And thank you again for collabing with me. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. Ooh. Subscribe. And then follow us on Instagram so you can see more Teddy and all my other pets because they're freaking adorable obviously and I will catch you guys in my next video soon. Bye!